Hello and welcome back to RC Model Reviews and today's on the bench I'm looking at this, it's the little ASAN, uh, what does it call itself? It calls it a dual receiver controller, it's just a little switch thing that enables you to put two receivers in a plane and switch between them which is ideal for training, for training flight training instead of using a buddy box. A normal conventional buddy box system has some downsides. This makes buddy boxing people or teaching them to fly a whole lot easier or does it? So let's put it on the bench and have a look at how it works and if it works. So here we are, we're all set up on the bench with the little SN unit here, the little switching unit down here, as you can see. Now I've got a FreeSky X8R receiver here, which is actually bound to this transmitter over here, the Tyrannus. And I've got JR receiver, which is bound to this transmitter here, JR transmitter. And I've taken two of the channels, because you know, two is enough to prove what's going on, taken two channels from this receiver, run them through to here, and the corresponding two channels on this receiver, and run them through to there. There's an extra wire on this particular one because this is my master. This is the receiver that I'm able to use to switch backwards and forwards between that one and that one. So my Tyrannus is my master transmitter. And if we go over to the Tyrannus here, you'll see I've got the servos down here. When I move my sticks, then the servos move. So it's just as if the system wasn't in, I'm just flying it with my Tyrannus, I'm the master, I'm the, I'm the, the sort of instructor. Then I get the plane up in the air, I want my student to fly, I flick a switch, and now my transmitter does nothing, but the student's transmitter has control of the servos. It's as simple as that. Very nice, very straightforward, no problems at all. If I want control back, I throw the switch again, and ooh, now I've got control. So yeah, it's like a buddy box system, except you don't have to link these two transmitters together. You can stand at opposite ends of the field if you wanted to, although it's not really practical. Uh, you don't have to link them together with a cable. You don't have to fart around putting this into slave mode and this into, you know, this into slave and this into master mode and trying to work out how to get the buddy boxes to talk. None of that hassle at all. You just install your gear with this little unit and bingo, you can control things really simple. Now, the reason I was interested in this is I want to set up a couple of models here for teaching people to fly and Quite often people come to me with a model that they've built and they want it trimmed out and then they want to, someone to buddy box them while they get up to speed on it. If, it's, if they've only flown a trainer before and they've got their first aerobatic model, they can feel a little bit uncomfortable about just simply taking off and flying it. So with this system, we throw this in there and we throw that in there and their receiver plugs in. So with, it doesn't matter whether they're mode two or mode one or what, what type of radio gear they're using. I can use my gear, my receiver, act as the instructor and I can take control back at any time. We can trim it all out until they're happy and they've got, you know, they feel confident and then we just pull the gear out and they're on their own. Simple as that. So yeah, look, it's a really great option for clubs that want to set up a no fuss buddy boxing system, but a couple of caveats, this is quite big. It's quite a large unit, you know, it's not tiny. So um, you won't be probably finding it easy to put it in an AXN, which is unfortunate because I want to use an AXN. The AXN gets quite cramped up front when you put a bit of gear in it. I'll try and squeeze this in because uh, I want to test it in the air when I get my exemption. And I think it's important that uh, you know, I give it a jolly good thorough testing. And also I want to use it. I want to have it here so that if someone comes along with one of their new models, you know, we can just test it out, make sure it works fine. Now, what I will do now is we'll just check and see um, when this thing browns out. It's always important with 2.4 gig gear when using this stuff. What happens? Does this stop before the receivers? What goes on? Let's just check and see. Okay, I can't get the power supply and all this in shot at once. So you, I'll just read out the voltage as I wind it down. And I guess I should, I'll take this transmitter so I can wiggle the sticks and you can, uh, you can see when it all stops working. I'll tell you if the Tyrannus receiver light goes out. So here we go, we're at five volts. Let's wind it down to four. Oops, let's go 4.5, all working happily. Let's go down to four volts. Yep, no problems. 3.5, still working. Let's go down to three, still working. Notice the lights are getting dim in the JR receiver there. I'll just switch over. Yeah, the JR is still working, no problem. So down to three volts, let's go down to 2.5. I think things will start, oh, no. Lost. No, actually, the both receivers have stopped here at 2.6 volts. The, the XR8 and the JR have both stopped. Let's just wind up. Oh, there we go. Lost. It's amazing that, that lost. we're just on the verge there. Here we go. Ooh, look at that. <laughs> Things, it's right on the cusp here at 2.8. Let's go to 2.9. Now we're good. We're all good now. 
2.9 volts, everything's working just fine. Switch over to the JR, it should also be working. Yep, there we go. So this unit isn't going to be the weak link if you're flying and you have a low voltage situation. This looks like it's going to keep going even after, well, it either fails at the same time as the receivers or it keeps going after the receivers have browned out. Brilliant, excellent. So it's not going to compromise the safety of your model. So there we go. Actually, I'm quite impressed. That seems to work just nicely. As I say, the only downside I can see is it's a little bit big and it doesn't really have to have seven or eight channels, whatever it's got. I mean, four channels would be heaps for a trainer plane, you know, your AXNs, whatever. If you made it four channels instead of seven, then it'd be much easier to fit it into an AXN. But hey, you know, you can't have everything. And it seems like a really good idea. I saw some wireless buddy boxing a few weeks ago with some people with uh, Spectrum transmitters DX9 and they had the wireless buddy boxing set up so they didn't need an umbilical cord between the two transmitters and it was actually looked really convenient. This gives you the same capabilities but you don't have to have two transmitters of the same brand. You can use JR, Futaba, FreeSky, Turnigy, any transmitter you can use as a master or a slave. That's brilliant. That's going to make it a whole lot easier if I get back into training people and helping them sort their models out. Brilliant. So I'd have to say, yeah, this is a looks like a good product now. There'll be a part two, of course, when I'm able to. I'll fly it. I've got to fly it to test it, but I've done everything I can do so far in terms of looking at this by putting it on the bench. So yeah, I'd say this, if you've got a club and you need to train people, this could be so much simpler than farting around with leads and trying to program up transmitters to work with buddy boxes and I oh, just get one of these. Looks like a brilliant idea. So stay tuned for part two though, because we'll check it in the air, although I can't see any problems coming from this little beauty. So there you go. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up, tell your friends and stay tuned. There'll be more stuff coming up from RC Model Reviews really soon. Uh, so for the time being, it's back to the bench.